very favorite segments of the net lease market and tonight I want to unpack why you too should be paying attention to fast food restaurants and what factors you need to consider when you are evaluating these types of investments. Now I personally do not eat fast food and you probably don't either although if you do I'm not judging but that is irrelevant when it comes to evaluating the stability of, of these types of deals as a long-term investment. So why fast food? Number one, it is pandemic proof. If the last six months have shown us anything, it is that fast food is essential to the American way of life. Not only that, but the actual footprint of the store lends itself very well to convenience and pandemic type um, shopping. So you have typically a drive through, you have easy pickup, you have a way to get the goods already in place that is in line with our current guidelines. So the drive-through has a ton of inherent value, and then the pickup is what every other retailer is going to now in an attempt to try to catch up to this already being done model. Second, it is recession-proof. So fast food tends to perform well, both in a rising economy and in a recession. It doesn't seem like the price point is always the driver. So of course, there will always be people who are looking for inexpensive food. That's one buyer pool of the product. But then there are people who are frankly just addicted to this type of food. So it doesn't matter if their incomes rise or if they go down, they're still going to eat it. So fast food is really a quality deal in both a, a booming market and in a recession. Third is it offers traditionally a very long lease term with annual or ever increases every five years. So on a new build, often you will see a 20 year deal and same goes for a sale leaseback, meaning if the tenant is selling the building and becoming just the tenant and no longer the property owner, very often you'll see a 20 year absolute net lease deal with increases of 10% or 8.5% every five years or 1.5% annually, which is a fantastic hedge against inflation. So it's a great way to get a long-term investment with those increases built into the lease. And last but not least, these are very easy deals to release, relatively speaking. So as long as your rent is in line with market, this sort of footprint, whether it be a Taco Bell or a Wendy's or a, any of these, a Popeye's chicken, are all very interchangeable with some minor upgrades to the facade. So if you have a building that's, let's call it 2,000 to 2,500 square feet, you're going to be able to interchange those brands fairly easily as long as you have a solid location. So you have a long-term stability play here as well if your specific tenant or your brand doesn't perform, perform as well as expected. So I think all those things combine to make it, in today's market, one of the, quote, safest places to really look for a long-term investing. Now, keep in mind that most of these tenants are not investment grade. So this is a very different mindset than if you were buying, let's say, a 7-Eleven or a Walgreens. Both phenomenal companies, and those deals are worth looking at too, but for very different reasons. So you don't have the credit of the guarantor, but you have inherent real estate characteristics that make it worth taking a second look at. So now I want to talk about things that you should be considering if you're going to evaluate a QSR or fast food investment option. So first you want to look at is, of course, your lease structure and your term. Now your lease structure could be double net, triple net, ground lease. All those play into what your management, if any, responsibilities will be. And it's something you want to take a very close look at. The second thing you want to think about is who is your tenant and guarantor? Now remember, those are two separate things. So just because your tenant is Wendy's does not mean you have a Wendy's corporate guarantee. So be very clear on who your actual guarantor on the lease is, which may be very different from who the main brand or tenant is on a corporate level. 
The third thing you want to look at is the actual position of your real estate in the market. And we talk about this in, in terms of all different types of sectors, all different types of real estate, but your underlying real estate still matters, even though a lot of your value will be held in the lease itself. So you want to make sure that you're on a, either a good corner with high traffic, maybe a signalized intersection, maybe a, a location that's off the beaten path, but has some surrounding traffic drivers like a hospital or a university that makes that worth considering. So consider your actual location within that market at large and make sure you're well positioned. Similarly, you want to consider the access for your site. Do you have good ingress and egress? Is it easy to get into your site from the highway if you're basing a lot of your traffic on a highway sort of destination? Is it, do you have to do a jug handle like we have to do so often in the New York, New Jersey area? Uh, that's a pain. So factor all those things in terms of access into the, the overall analysis of your site. The next thing you want to look at is your market rent. Is your rent above market? Is it below market? Is it replaceable? Now, very often, if you have a brand new build, your rent will start out somewhat above market. And that's natural and usually pretty hard to avoid. So if a developer or the tenant, depending on the structure, has just paid, put up a you know, multi-million dollar building, it's very likely that you're going to pay a somewhat of a premium for that long-term lease and the new build. However, you don't want to be 40, 50, 60% above market rent because there's no way you're going to replace that should your tenant leave. So be mindful of your rent levels, but do note that your rent is not going to be in line with, let's call it a, a strip center or an older multi-tenant retail building. So just because you are slightly above market does not necessarily mean it's a bad deal but it is something you want to consider. Last, you want to think about your brand. Now, some brands are absolutely crushing it. Some are kind of fading away. And I'll give you some examples. Checkers, not really growing, not as much in demand. Krispy Kreme, kind of having a resurgence, but not as strong of a brand as let's say Wendy's. Um, so be mindful of the growth pattern and strategy of the underlying brand that you're investing in as well. Last thing I want to touch on is one brand that has absolutely outperformed my expectations and probably most investors as well throughout the last year, and that is Popeye's Chicken. So their year-over-year -year sales in Q2 of 2020 were up 28% amid the pandemic. So at a time when all retailers were crying and crying and crying, Popeyes was absolutely and still is knocking it out of the park. They were acquired by RBI Restaurant Brands International in 2017, which was a great strategic move for RBI, which is also the parent company of Burger King and Tim Hortons. And through that acquisition, I think they have a, a really great back end corporate structure and a lot more bandwidth to grow. In 2019, they released a chicken sandwich, you might remember this from the headline, that sold out in the first two weeks, and they could not keep it in stock, causing some tiffs at some of their locations because the chicken sandwich was so popular and so in demand. So I really would look at Popeyes as a brand that is speaking to their market, they're expanding, they have a tight menu, a reasonable cost of goods sold, and some very successful franchisees who are in major expansion mode. And there are other brands that you want to watch, but in an effort to keep this as short and tight as possible, that's all we're gonna to cover today. If QSR is something that you're interested in exploring, as always, give me a call, happy to walk you through it. That was Siri Fast Five. I'm Carly Iacono. I look forward to seeing you again soon.